Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Friday, January 3rd, 2020. And in this video, we'll cover, we'll do an update on uh, some of the trade ideas on the site that have been shared recently, both official and unofficial. Uh, now, just to recap, if you've been away, you're new to the site, or you've been kind of taking some time off, like a lot of people lately, um, the vast majority of trade ideas now in the last couple of months have been unofficial trade ideas because I, I do these videos and I throw out the best looking stocks. Uh, sometimes I'll pick one and I'll, I'll put um, you know price targets, the suggested stops, all the trade parameters take some time to mark those up. Um, but uh, again, unofficial, unofficial or unofficial, I always share my thoughts on it. So a lot of the unofficial trades uh, will, will, won't will meet the criteria of official trade because they're very aggressive stocks, low price stocks. We're going to go over quite a few of those today. But that is where the money's to be made. So going back for months now, although day after day I talk about support levels to watch, it could trigger the next correction, pullbacks. Um, make no mistake about it. Those are levels to watch only because when the market's at new highs, there are no overhead resistance levels. So I can't tell you, well, watch for a reversal at uh, 218.90 on QQQ uh, resistance spy we don't have that so uh, again day after day I'll talk about if this breaks that will trigger the next sell off down to this level give you pullback targets but yet on the flip side 90 to maybe even 95 percent or more of all trade ideas shared in the past several months have all been long side trade ideas and we're going to go over those today because many still uh, offer you know uh, either are offering objective entries now maybe it's time to book profits uh, on some uh, but again I'll update uh, some of the trade ideas recently and just to you know kick this off a uh, quick update on the market so QQQ this is a 60 minute chart I'll give you the uh, futures charts this morning on QQQ we had uh, we still have the divergence somebody asked Randy you know let me know if, uh, if let us know if and when the divergences are burned out it, you know on the 60 minute chart indicators move faster on the 60 minute chart so these divergences could be burned out if the cues continue to rally however they are still intact now on the daily and weekly charts still very much intact here's QQQ uh, you go to the weekly chart now these divergences take longer uh, to be burned through especially on the monthly chart so you have you know the bigger divergences um, now as I always say divergences aren't sell signals there uh, you can you want to look for sell signals and I went over those last week so let's not get off topic here I just want to cover trade ideas and I did want to mention again the divergences are still very much intact on the longer term time frames they're still intact right now on the uh, 60 minute time frames and uh, this is spy right here so pretty much what we need to see it's a down day we've been red so far uh, the f indexes have recouped a lot of the today's gains and when you look at these candles this is the opening candle right here the red candle we gap down we rallied back up somewhat and pretty much there's some minor resistance there too you can see these candles over here so spy is at resistance right now still red by down uh, by about a half a percent and uh, somebody mentioned today on the home page it's you know red we haven't seen many red candles here uh, or at least on a weekly chart let's see what we're looking at here on a weekly chart if we close right now uh, let's see spy if we close here would close slightly green and uh, you have a slightly green candle there as well so the daily chart we're looking to get a red close unless we can rally a little more into the close today okay and just a flip black flip on back to that QQQ 60 minute chart there's your uptrend line here was the breakdown pulse of everything it looked good very good at the time uh, was the biggest uh, red candle we had in a while we flagged at that point the bear flags uh, never played out they they broke down but not impulsively hit that 211.42 which again was a first sport slash target and so far that has held so that level needs to go and from there we went on one back test pulled back that was on Thursday this back test here that candle on Friday at the close we made a second back test and then a gap down uh, or I should say I'm sorry not Friday uh, yesterday on Thursday and today a gap down right there and again we've recovered some but the queues are still down by uh, almost a half a percent right now we'll see how the day ends the you know, market's been very resilient but the big levels at least on this QQQ chart to watch at least near term is at 211.42 level it's been defended quite a bit lately and uh, so we have you know the posture is bearish but the price action has been very bullish they continue to buy up every dip so let's let's again not focus too much I may even trim back a little bit on the market analysis because it's the same old same old you have these divergences set up you have breakdowns little sell signals but they're just 
so far playing out to little bounces. That won't always be the case. I promise you that. There'll become a day and a time where sell signals will play out for m as much or more than the chart pattern indicates to measure targets, in other words. Uh, but right now, you know, the bid is strong. So let's just look, go back to, uh, again, let's look at some trade ideas because that's where the money's to be made. I'm going to start out here, get the ugly out of the way, and that's PALL, one of the recent official trades. And that hit our stop yesterday uh, at a suggested stop at about uh, or at 184.70. So that was hit right there um, about on the 11 a.m. candle, pulled back, consolidated under that level, and we've moved up. Now, as I said this morning, you know, the technical posture of the markets, I can still make the case for a pullback. We're still down today. We've recovered some of that. And most importantly, going back to QQQ and SPY, we're down below those 60-minute trend lines. Um, and, and, you know, as I mentioned, RTY, the small cap futures, hit the uh, uh, first support level target uh, just today. Uh, here's IWM. They're also below the wedge pattern. So there is a potential for more downside. And because Palladium has traded uh, largely in line with the equity markets, there is the potential that it could um, uh, most likely will uh, move down if and when the stock market moves down. But if the stock market doesn't, here's what's probably going to happen on Palladium. Uh, so whether or not you're in it or you want to give it more room or you're looking for the next setup, uh, let me move this chart over here. This is the hourly chart. Looks just like PA. LL, the ETF that I just showed you there. These are the futures. Here's a trend line to watch. Small negative divergence here, um, but what really stands out to me is this daily chart here. Let's go to an 18-month daily candles. So you can see on this daily chart, you had these divergent highs, divergent high there, and divergent high here. And right now, we don't have a divergent high. You don't have to have that, guys. Again, divergent high, number one, doesn't guarantee a sell-off. And nor do you have to have negative divergence when you have corrections. A lot of the big corrections and big market turns come from divergent highs and lows. Um, but again, not a not a absolute criteria. But it often when you get like this and you see the PPOs turning back up here and you're very close to that previous high, more often than not, not always, but more often than not, they're going to run it. They're going to pop those stops set right above that level, give you a new high, marginal new high. You will have then reverse, have negative divergence. See if we just went up just a little bit more here. In fact, we have negative divergence now. It's just not what I call confirmed. It's unconfirmed because the PPO is pointing up. You need to turn back down, put in a lower high there, um, and then you can see there's that trend line I just showed you on the 60-minute chart. You break that. So this would be an ideal scenario whether you want to give it that much more room and you know measure it out it's hard to say exactly but based on the chart i would say marginal marginal meaning about in this case maybe you know, call it two to three percent possibly four hard to say but somewhere in that range we'll call it two to four percent upside in palladium and again that would be a marginal new high that's not necessarily a sell signal then look for a bearish reversal candlestick topping stick and or a break of this uh, trend line wedge there and that would give you a nice divergent high and set the stage for a, a, a big drop. So uh, palladium will most likely be added back as an official short trade uh, whether makes that marginal new high or not maybe if we break this before then and again it, a lot has to do and I said it at the time we took this trade it will depend largely on what the market does. The market did not roll over. The market powered on the new highs therefore the breakdown in palladium I thought there was another leg down so far there hasn't been we're still off the highs keep in mind we're still off the highs but uh, not far from them now so that's that's the update on palladium and uh, let's see what other one I wanted to update for you oh yeah Bitcoin uh, GBTC the Bitcoin trust it's a ETF like instrument and uh, we had our first target you know on this one right here we had entry on a break above 863 that occurred right about here boom quick quick move up to our first target got the typical reaction meaning a you know a reversal off that level it was a resistance zone there we pulled back quite a bit but came in right about those previous lows so you can see this simply extended the divergences max stop if you're targeting t3 if you didn't book your profits at t1 full or partial profits uh, the max stop remains 772 we're still above that now and uh, it, it's looking pretty good here uh, we just broke about this minor downtrend line divergent low on the 60 minute chart it's the same divergence we had here only larger now it's continued to expand so I, I still like it um, you know, and it is, as I said also on this trade, this 
Bitcoin is uh, quite often a risk-off trade, a lot like gold, where people you know buy Bitcoin. You know when the market starts to you know, go down, volatility. So it would most certainly help to see the market correct. Uh, when the stock market's strong, that's what people want to put their money into. They're chasing whatever is going up. Market corrects, uh, you should get an extra bid on gold and Bitcoin if that happens. So there it is. I just wanted to mention that the trade is uh, still active and still looks good. Not great, but good. I'll just leave it at that. And I mentioned these two along with it. Um, unofficial proxies, they could say they're Bitcoin proxies over. They tend to trade in line with uh, Bitcoin. Overstock is one. It's broken out, but again, Bitcoin's not really moving far, but it has broken out. Not impulsive. Uh, if it can continue to build on these gains, and if you zoom in really tightly, you can put a line here on those recent highs. About 716. If it pops that, it should run. And again, the odds would would be tremendously higher of overstock going on and, and we're heading up here to that 919 target. It'd be a pretty nice gain from 716 if Bitcoin rallies as well. So uh, sometimes, in, uh, quite often, Bitcoin will lead first, then these guys will break out. And the other one was Riot, uh, Riot Blockchain. That's still below trend right there. Really needs to clear not only the trend line, but 130. So that's an update on those. Um, these guys, that Riot and Overstock for now, they're unofficial, but there's targets. And again, I've shared my thoughts on those. Now let's look at, well, let's do an update on uh, this recent video back um, from a few weeks ago. Um, just before the holidays, I covered these ideas here. So you can see it's uh, called Swing Trade Ideas 211.19. And what we're going to do is an update on these uh, real quick because a lot of these still look good right now. CEI number one. CEI at the time was, let's, I don't know why that video is so blurry. I can probably maximize it. Nope, that's not going to work. Thicks in it. Uh, fills the whole monitor. Um, there it is. Got a little more crisp there. Uh, let's do this picture in picture. That's kind of cool. All right, it was about 219 or 220 there. Uh, I think there may be 212, and let's look at it now. So CEI, it hasn't run yet, and there's still potential. Now, this is an energy play. Uh, I'm going to go back here. All right, so, you know, you had the divergent low, and we're about where we were then. So this one started to move up. It's been consolidating here, and it really needs to pop uh, not much above where it is now, about maybe 260 or so. Uh, looks like some resistance there, and I think this one can run. It'll all depend on what crude does. I probably should get to that. Somebody asked me my, my thoughts on crude. I did post this chart under uh, one of the posts. I think it was today's most recent post before this one, and they asked where I think crude is going. I still think it's due for a pullback. There was a pop due to the, the U.S. bombing where they killed an Iraqi um, military high-ranking high military member um, and so that popped crude futures overnight and so what I said in that post look that was certainly a news induced spike in crude but it was also uh, technically induced as well. It was news induced. That was a catalyst, but it was uh, a technical breakout. You had a downtrend line here. I believe that was highlighted in the last update on crude. little s minor downtrend line. You popped it, but what we did is we put in uh, another divergent high. We extended these divergences on the PPO and also put in a, a divergent high there, and we've been fading that. So I said I think that gets faded. I still think we get a pullback in crude. Um, however, the energy stocks, I can say now for about at least two months if not three look to be the most bullish of all the sectors within the s all the 11 sectors within the s p 500 the major sectors that is so we're going to go over some of the energy stocks here today and um, uh, quite a few biotechs remain on my radar as well i've covered those before we'll do updates there so there it is uh, maybe a near-term pullback Hey, maybe not. It's crude spending just like the stock market. It's been in a very resilient uptrend. So take it for what it's worth. I'm showing you the levels and uh, where the charts indicate it's likely going. But again, you have to give a, you know, a weighting to the fact they, you know, continue to gobble up risk on assets like the stock market, crude oil, things like that. Uh, we're also seeing the risk off assets rally, and that's technically induced. Gold, like I said, gold had a great breakout recently. Silver. Um, so you're seeing the risk off assets also doing well right now. Pretty much anything with a ticker is getting bought up right now. Okay, back to CEI, and we'll run through these a little quicker. Uh, that the, the target on CEI again. This this assumes a you know tradable bottom in the energy stocks. 
who knows how much leg, uh, how much more upside the equity markets go. I didn't think they'd be going on this far. They're really not that far above the previous highs. The thing is, it's more of a, a, a of a just a, a slow and steady grind. You know, the S&P 500, as I've mentioned, since all the way back here in July, um, that's where you had that top there, second double top, and we finally broke out. So from that July high, uh, you know, over six months ago or so, we're only up, actually, well, here's where we're at today, the market's up 6%. So it's not up that much, it just won't go down. And again, that's why I'm doing this video. The money to be made are in these individual trade ideas. So the next one up was uh, covered in that video was uh, DSKE. And it was right here at the time at about 332. And so I had it, you know, a breakout above that uh, trend line there, that horizontal level with the first resistance level and target being this downtrend line um, that was then. So D S K E and you can see beautiful price action. Boom, we popped there uh, from the 328 level where it broke out. We ran up and, and that's about a 15% rally. And you can see a brief momentum fueled overshoot of my that downtrend line which was a target and the reason I'm doing this video is you know hey great if you got that quick 15% got in get out I certainly most certainly expected a reaction there it's a very well-defined long-term a more significant downtrend line when you have a chart like this you have two downtrend lines like you have this one here the smaller one and then the bigger one above this one takes precedence you have more reactions it comes from a you know much longer time period so there's your primary downtrend line this is your secondary downtrend line so boom that was breakout one breakout two was above 328 from there we were able to get a 15 percent quick pop get out because uh, the odds were very high you'd get a reaction pull back off that level and it's exact what happened and this is just this chart is a great you know um, example of technical analysis here uh, you have to break out hit resistance pull back to intersecting support you had both the uptrend line right here as well as the downtrend line here uh, forming that triangle you hit the almost the apex there and you're moving up now so we need to once again take out 328 but at this point in time we're looking more so for a, a break of the downtrend line since we've tested it again so it's objective to go long with a stop somewhat below uh, this this level right here or really the recent lows you can call it right there this candle um, and hold on for breakout it could be a dead money trade I have to caution you that you know the safer play if you are you know if you don't have patience and in trading especially longer term swing and trend trading and investing patience pays it's an absolute must day traders active traders a little more impatient so an active trader might want to wait for a breakout so you don't get tied up in here in case it grinds around you know within this larger triangle pattern defined by the uptrend line and the downtrend line there or maybe it comes on and back tests this one forms a price channel that those are those are certainly possibilities and that could last for months so take it as you want or you got your quick 15 percent uh, from the breakout there above 328 and you got out great uh, that's why I'm doing this update uh, next up was JMEI. Let's, let's click over to that. Skip the video here. Where was JEMI? Oh, there it was. JEMI was at about, uh, what is that, 189 at the time. And as I said, a I used the words beautiful, beautiful uh, bullish engulfing candle. That's about as good as it gets. And um, so there was your, you know, the buy signal came, especially when you had the follow up the next day. And that's it. That was the big uh, bullish and golfing candle. Was that it right here? Yeah, that, that would have been it right there. And you can see from this point, it ran up. Let me go back to that uh, video real quick. It was at, uh, yeah, 189 at that point. And so if we go to 189 right here, there's 188, close enough. Uh, that one was good for about 12 12 percent or so uh, and it went up made a brief overshoot of that downtrend line pulled back um, really need to see it punch up above this 223 level now uh, for the next buy signal but remember it put in a divergent low bullish divergence right here and that one's a uh, specialty retail I'm gonna say not one of my favorites let me just say that now we've got a quick move out of there if you took it great and it may be a bottoming play with that bullish engulfing candle but uh, um, not crazy about the fact that it pulled back down below that trend line right now and back below the 198 level well actually it's at 199 now so we've regained it but again we've moved through it so I'm gonna move away from that one say if you took it great and if you're a long-term trader investor that's fine too just you know set a stop um, and then let it ride you know this as long as the trend in the market is bullish that will not last forever 
promise you that, but it is for now. And so you can uh, trade accordingly, just, you know, trail stops up on things like that. All right, next one up was ORMP, uh, Ormed Pharmaceuticals. This is a biotech stock and uh, we're flagging at that point in time around 531 uh, was the price or MD no what did I say that symbol was uh, ORMP okay ORMP and we're still the flag's getting sloppy guys I'm gonna say that I'm not I'm not so keen on this one now it could play out but it's so far it's continues to fail about that 579 level and uh, I'm gonna kind of move away from this one because the flag hasn't played out as I wanted to see at that point we kind of started to move up but then we faded back that's that's a failed bull flag breakout so let's just uh, if you're in it probably good time to tighten up stops don't let it go much lower um, anything is possible could turn around and rip but uh, again and it doesn't look as good to me as it did back here. Uh, RMP Sage next, S-A-G-E, Sage Pharmaceuticals, and that should be right about here. Sage was at 68, um, 61 at the time, but actually I'm, I put that on as a trade idea back here. Uh, the day it got knocked down and uh, said, you know, ultimately it bounced target up to 76.70. I mentioned I took some quick profits initially and then um, I had actually two lots on that one. And I can't recall where I took my second uh, uh, profits on the second lot, but uh, most of that, that trade's been milked. So remember, we caught it here that day. I first posted it, I believe, in the trading room. Then I may have followed up a, a, a trade idea before this video. And from there, we were good for a bounce of about 37%. Again, that was that. That was the, uh, you know, the swing bounce target up there. The first target at 78, 76. You know, I had a resistance zone there, but it could continue up. But like I said, I think the most of the meat has been milked. You know, taken off the bone on that trade. So if you got that 35 plus percent. You know, you've had several opportunities to get out. It could go higher. And again, if you're a long-term investor, you can set a stop somewhat below, um, protect your profits and let it run. It just may be a dead money trade for a while. I think it may continue to consolidate in that range. Um, unless the market has a blow off top here, then everything's likely to go up with it. Okay, the next up was f -cell. Here, I'll quit this. This is the video running. Let me just stop that and let me go back here and show you what I was trying to look at. Okay, f -cell. I mentioned you could take it right here at the time. It was just cracking. It just cracked above that downtrend line. It was at 56 cents. Uh, so you, I said uh, take it there and I added a level, I think, at 98. There it was, 99. Yeah, I said if it popped above 98, uh, so any break on 99 or more uh, would be a secondary entry point. And uh, again, that was just a few weeks ago, and this one was good for, you're going to be impressed if you already took it, you know, 440% pop. There it was. Like I said, breakout entry number one. That was the day right there we had broken out. And from there, we ran up 440%. There was your second entry point and took out the 99 cent. As I said, that's always bullish when a stock can, when it drops below a dollar and then can regain that level. Uh, they they you know, have, you know, at least temporarily dodged a bullet of delisting. If stock trades under a dollar share for too long, they risk being delisted. So uh, anyways, congrats to those who caught it. And I said on this one and then, you know, maintain it. If you're new to the site and you say, wow, 440%. Yeah, the thing is you put your Vegas money here. You don't put as much as you put into a Spy or Apple or anything like that because of the risk involved. This one could have went the other way, uh, but fortunately it went uh, our way there. And that was right about resistance. You can see I could add a line right there too. Uh, boom right there a big old gap and a couple reactions so anyways that that's it I think all the milk has been or all the meat has been milked off the bone on that trade and let's move on to the next one all right I paused the video I may have talked over this one already I'm not sure but it, NK was the next one up uh, and at the time again just a few weeks ago was trading at 185 and I stated that one uh, breakout uh, highlighted a very nice basing pattern in the video I covered this uh, beautiful basing pattern right here and set a break above 194 with a secondary entry above the uh, break of the downtrend line minimum target there 266 uh, but again that was be a more powerful breakout 
if we got it. That was a few weeks ago. We were at uh, 185 at the time, and uh, beautiful, beautiful price action since. You can see we took out 194, 153% gain on that one in just one, two, three, four, four candlesticks, four trading days. You're good for 153% rally, and it's still it's still running. It had a little pullback there, and it's it's powering back up. So here's one. Like I said, you can just trail stops and let this thing ride. I, it could certainly continue on. A lot of these stocks that I'm updating and, uh, and I've highlighted in recent weeks are biotech stocks. Again, lower price biotech stocks. I talked about that ad nauseum in the last video, um, but there it is. So you know you you know you can try to get you know take your money and, and put it in SPY or QQQ and squeeze out you know three, four, five, six percent you know over that period of time, just a few percentage points, or you know spread it out into these guys. M you know m m make sure you have stops in place because they're not all going to pan out. Although the majority of these trades have since uh, that video, and um, and let them run. You're going to have some you know that uh, you know we've had several here that were you know triple digit gainers, and that's just been three weeks ago. All right, next one up was I'll go back to the video here, and we were at NKLOGM. That's logged me in. Okay, log me in was at 8041. This was a daily chart that I covered. I believe I covered a weekly chart as well. I started adding targets. I'm just clicking through the video here. Uh, LOGM, this was a weekly chart here and a beautiful wedge breakout right there. Uh, so look, 8035 at the time. Let's see what it looks like now. LOGM, uh, there it is. It, it went up here and uh, 8035. Uh, we've, you know, it's up quite a bit since then, uh, high single digits, m maybe close to 10%. And what it did, it broke out above the $85 level and it's been, it's back testing. So this is an objective long entry here. You can see that was resistance. We popped above it and we've been back testing above. And again, uh, still looks constructive on the weekly chart here when you look at it this way. And, uh, so that's it. So if you're in it, um, just maybe raise your stops to maybe entry now to assure a break even on the trade and uh, let it run until you know unless you get some type of sell signal here or something really ugly happens in the broad market okay next up in the video uh, from a few weeks ago was AXU it was trading at 208 at the time I said night here I said this is a stock that was clearly in an uptrend uh, so you know not all the stocks and you know that I look at are bottoming plays or topping plays or reversal points here's your you know an uptrend is defined as a security making a series of higher lows and higher highs and that's what this is and plus you had positive divergence at the time so it was 208 back then I mentioned next buy signal to come on a break above this level here and from that point we're up 21 percent from 208 we hit a high so far of about uh, I don't know what is it about 250 or so the other day close to it so about a 21 one percent gainer uh, in uh, AXU. Now it's coming back in a little bit and this level here is support. Now let me give you the number that should act as support about 214. Yeah, make that a little brighter so it stands out for you. There it is. Okay next up in that video was uh, right here ALO. ALO is uh, a gold stock and that one was um, at uh, 71 cents a share you know nice nice looking chart and uh, listed these these targets up here uh, so from there 71 cents uh, was a few weeks ago we've rallied 20 percent so about a 20 percent gain up to that first target there I had at 84 the only thing I've done to this chart I've updated it is I've added a downtrend line which comes in perfectly with that 84 target I had so we hit that first target for 20 percent gain you can book profits there if you're a quick trader get in get out or you know hold on just you know set your stops at break even or higher let it run and um, or if you're you know I haven't taken it and you're looking for uh, you know gold stocks uh, look for a breakout above that level you have the downtrend line comes in just a hair below so you want to be safe wait for a solid break above 84 and that opens the door to these next targets up here 106 and 132 Okay, next up in the video was FPRX, and that one was trading at uh, 442 at the time. It had just made an impulsive breakout, triggering a buy signal, both the downtrend line as well as a 433 level. Uh, first target's 515, then 649, and that one we're already good for a 15% rally. Broke out, made a back test, another thrust up. 
gained 15% from where it uh, was highlighted in that video a few weeks ago, and it now offers an objective entry. Again, that's the point for this video. Some of these, you know, I'm saying might be a good time to tighten up stops or take the profits and run, whereas others like this still offer an objective entry because you have the breakout here, you know, breakout back tests, a break above the 433 resistance, and uh, that resistance, once broken, becomes support. Uh, so you can you know go long with a stop. I wouldn't allow for another back test at this point. That's just too much of a drop. You know downtrend lines come in at lower and lower levels each day. It was okay on the first time around, but at this point you you'd want to stop somewhat above 433. Uh, 515 was almost hit, but not quite. So that's still the next target. And then 649 probably get a reaction there on 515. Run up to 649. And next up in the video was ATRA. This is a biotech stock as well. Like I said, a lot of those kind of obscure biotechs. The big names really aren't on my radar, although I'm, oh, I, I do want to cover X, uh, XBI. It has pulled back to support. So the, the bigger name biotechs have corrected recently, but a lot of these small ones, and that's, of course, the ones I've been highlighting, those have been moving. Uh, so, you know, biotech sector is very diverse, and you have to be selective uh, on the names. So this one was at 1567. It had just broken out above 1439. Let's take a look at it now. Uh, and it's already up quite a bit, 1567. Uh, I don't know, we're in percentage terms, you know, six, seven, eight percent. Here's a trend line to watch. So we're a little shy of that 1749 target. Here's a trend line to watch that ideally it should hold. You could use that for tight stops or any pullback to the 1439 level would offer an objective entry uh, with the next target at 1749 and, you know, potentially more. I, I wouldn't say this is my next target after that if 1749 is taken out but it's pretty thin I could I could certainly add a couple targets in here maybe around 2166 and uh, just want to say constructive looking chart and next up uh, was AGX. Actually, this is the one I was harping on, the beautiful bullish and coughing candle, not the one I covered previously. Uh, that one I obviously liked, uh, the setup, but this one had the big, the clean bullish and coughing. You can see it just a huge green candle. Uh, it was trading at 35.90 at the time. I gave you a first target here, 37.44 and uh, that was hit and exceeding. I had a second target at 41.37. Perfect tag of that. I, I don't know if it was actually on that to the button. 41.36 right there, close enough for government work. 15% gain uh, had you taken it on that, you know, bullish engulfing candle. So uh, nice, nice uh, exit there. That was pretty, pretty decent resistance too. And look, it still, still looks to have more. Um, like I said, the market is, it's getting very overbought. We still have those divergences on the 60 minute chart. So so, you know, by the time I get this video out, let's see how we close today. Um, so far, it's, you know, it's a red day. And, um, you know, some of these stocks may come back in. This is engineering construction. If it does, you can see 34, another pullback to 34, uh, 37.44. Well, I wouldn't wait for all the way down there. I'd, I'd step in a little early with a stop somewhat below. Because if all eyes are looking to buy at 37.44, sometimes people step in early. You know, 10, 15 cents early depends on the, you know, what the stock's trading at. Um, you know, if it gets there, and it may not. And if you took it and you didn't take profits on the quick 15% pop, then uh, just, you know, raise stops and let it run. Uh, again, constructive looking chart. Last time we had a divergent low like this, here's our positive divergence, was back here. And you can see from that point, you know, the stock rallied up uh, to right here. It went up about 35%. Okay, pump was uh, next one up. We only have a few more to go here, guys, and then we're done. Pump uh, was uh, hit at 9.75. It had just broken out above 9.49, following a breakout here above the uh, beautiful bullish falling wedge. This is this one was a really nice setup here. You had a bullish falling wedge pattern. This is an energy stock uh, confirmed with positive divergence. Everything covered then, and then just a really nice resistance level there at about 9.49. So the stock had been basing, and I said it was a go at that time. Or I believe I would have uh, because that uh, was you know over the level breaking out that day and fast forward there it was at 975 we got a quick 19 percent looks to be bull flagging now uh, so here's a pretty impulsive move up flagging here and uh, these are the next targets 12 and then 1404 again I shared my thoughts on the energy so sector so you got to watch oil oil's been shrugging off divergences this stock is very overbought as well. Uh, so not a bad time to just tighten up stops, especially if that flag gets foiled, meaning we start to move down below it uh, significantly. So uh, whether you want to, you know, hold on and let it run, you know, energy sector still looks good, intermediate to maybe even longer term, 
All depends on how long the market holds up. All right, just a couple more to go here. S E M F F. Uh, Semifo, if I pronounced that correctly, and that one was just above. I had nice support here at about 177.6. You call that 178. It had just hit that level, positive divergence there. And uh, let's see, that was about what was it trading at? Well, 188 at the time. S E M F F. And boom, good for there was the entry there. There was objective entry. Pop 19% in just a few weeks, couple weeks there, and it's pulled back a little. And so what it stands out to me is this one may be setting up in a potential inverse head and shoulders bottoming pattern. With uh, you can see it drawn out here. In other words, your left shoulder head. Uh, potential right shoulder and form. So we'll watch this one if it pulls back or and starts to then move back up. And ideally, you want to see this move up on increased volume. That's one criteria for a head and shoulder. And then you have your neckline somewhere about here. And that would take us up to my next target there at about 252. That should project about that level as well as a downtrend line coming roughly together. Uh, kind of quantify it for you from right here. Sometimes I'll play a head and shoulders pattern before it even is fully formed. I'll, I'll I'll let's say bet on it forming by taking a position on the on the end of the right shoulder and with a stop somewhat below in case the pattern's foiled and it gives you a better entry. And then what I'll usually do a half position then add if and when the pattern's finalized. So you know from right here if it gets up to that 252 ish level that's about a 24 percent rally if it gets there again from where we're at and we already had a 19 percent lift from where it was highlighted a few weeks ago. And uh, blue, last one was blue. I believe that's a biotech as well. Um, yep, Bluebird Bio. And that one was just popping or right above or right below the 8730 level. And let's look at it now. B L U E. Uh, it broke out, went up 10%. It's pulled back and it's back below that level now. So I'm not as hot as uh, on this one anymore. You know, if you got a quick five, six, seven, eight percent, ten percent, and got out, great. Um, and and look, it isn't an uptrend, and the stock did break out. So let me just be clear on that. Uh, although again, it's not my favorite. Sometimes those that aren't my favorites are the ones that turn out to be the biggest gainers. You never know. Um, but you know, here's a breakout rally, breakout rally, and a nice breakout. You know, these downtrend line price channels. Uh, boom break out and then maybe it's in a new uptrend and this would be your next target up there about 114 and change okay guys we will wrap it up here uh, long video but again a lot of trade ideas and and I wanted to do it as I said twofold to follow up on those that I've already highlighted and let you know which ones are still actionable or still you know might have more upside and which ones you might want to either book profits on if you didn't do so already or tighten it up this has been Randy Finney with right side of the chart hope you enjoyed it